Hello, my name is Sarah Musletter and I'm a teacher in Livingston, Montana, and I'm going to talk to you today about bullet journaling and how you can organize the chaos that is your life. If you are anything like me, this year and last spring has been absolutely bonkers. And on top of just being a human in a pandemic, we have so much else that we have on our plates that we have to remember and be responsible for and care about. And again, if you're like me, that can become overwhelming if we don't have a system in how to organize that. So with bullet journaling, what we're gonna be talking about today is how do we take all of the things that we're constantly having in our brain and turn them into one organized book that is going to make us more creative, more productive, and have less stress in our life. Also, I would recommend that if you don't already practice this, I watch all YouTube videos and videos like this on a different speed. So if you go down to the little settings wheel and you change it to 1.25 or one and a half or even 1.75, it compresses that video and it makes it a lot less time consuming to listen to, but you can still listen to the content without listening to all the ums. So take a second and do that. So I have been asked by many friends, why do I bullet journal? Why don't I just buy a planner? Why don't I just make some lists? And those may work for a lot of people, but for me, they didn't quite work. I've bought lots of planners from stores and I have finished none of them because the way that they're set up doesn't quite click with the way that my brain works. Um, and that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with my brain. It just means that I don't think the same as the person who created that journal. And that's fine. The nice thing about bullet journaling is that it's highly personal, personal, personable, personalizable, customizable. There we go. Um, it's the end of the work day. Uh, so bullet journals are highly customizable and you're able to create exactly what you need and then change it the very next month. So I might need a lot more behavior tracking during the beginning of the school year and lists of who's in my class, what class they're in, engagement, things like that, than I do at the very end where I'm worrying more about their final products and what they're going to be doing for their projects, uh, who's gone during the spring sports season, things like that. And I can have all of that within one book. Um, another reason why I bullet journal is that it's budget friendly. So the same journal because there are, there's, there's personalized and customized journal planners out there uh, that you can order off the internet um, and they're beautiful and they're great. They're expensive um, and I'm a cheapo, so that's not gonna work for me. Really all, of you, all you need is a journal and a pen. You don't need all the fancy stuff. You don't need to make it look crazy if you, want, if you don't want to. You just need a pen and a book. Uh, so it's very cost effective. The other reason that I'm loving it is because it makes me take time to be creative. And as an art teacher, I think that it's very important that we not only teach our craft, but we practice our craft. So whether that's drawing or painting or printmaking or photography, use what you fell in love with to become an art teacher um, and continue to do that. It makes us better teachers. And this journal can actually become a vehicle to do that. Um, so I draw in my journal, I paint in my journal, um, I can tape those in because if I do like watercolors, I'm not going to watercolor in my book necessarily, but I can watercolor on paper and pa tape it in my book. Um, I've done printmaking and people make stamps. They're so cool. Um, so the creative outlets within the bullet journaling world are endless. Um, it also increases my productivity. So instead of trying to constantly remember 12 million things, I can write them down once. They get to leave my head. <laughs> because they're recorded, they're somewhere where I'm not gonna forget them, and they're organized. And so instead of spending time thinking about what I have to do, I can look at what I have to do and just get it done. And for me, who's a master procrastinator, that's important. Um, I hear a lot of teachers, they're like, I don't have enough time in the day. Yes, we are absolutely stretched thin, and the responsibilities are on the rise every single day. But if you can cut out the time that you're wondering what you have to do, by just looking at a list, you're gonna get so much more done and you're gonna be able to leave at the end of the day and leave some stuff at work, which is a very important thing for your mental health. Uh, another reason that I love it is because of that mental health piece. So when we're constantly trying to remember things and we're forgetting things, it's spiking our amygdala, it's making that part of our brain that's sending stress signals and cortisol 
um, which have effects on our mood, on our weight, on a lot of different things, all from not remembering something. Um, and it sp spikes that anxiety. Um, so the idea behind bullet journaling is not that it's a one-stop shop fix for your mental health, but it definitely positively influences it. Um, I've seen an effect in myself. I was highly stressed out. Um, I lean in and out of depression, depending on what's going on in my life. Um, and it gets worse when I am stressed out because I'm forgetting things. I hate feeling stupid. And when I forget things, that makes me feel dumb. And so my self-esteem starts going down. Um, and so by starting to journal a few years ago, I was able to see an increase in how I viewed myself. So I was proud of my journal. I wanted to show it to people. Um, but also I was able to remember things and seem more articulate to my peers. Uh, being a young teacher at that point, it was very important to me that I, that I knew what I was talking about. And when you're scrambling always to get things done, you don't seem like you know what you're talking about. So that has definitely helped my mental health in the long run. Uh, another thing is that everything is one, in one place. So I love making lists, but if they're not in a book, I will lose them 100%. Um, or it looks like the beautiful mind all over my desk, um, which is actually still true sometimes. So lists are great, but if you can have them organized, that's even better. And so that's part of what bullet journaling can do for you. And the last piece is a little bit froofy, but something that is very important and that I'm very passionate about is that bullet journals can become almost scrapbooks and memory books for the moments in our life that normally we would not take time to recognize. So I have things in my bullet journal from years ago that without writing them down, I would have forgotten about them completely. Funny things that kids said in class, um, nice things that kids said to me on a, on a day that I was having a really terrible day, writing down those really terrible days and talking about them to myself. Um, it's important that we allow ourselves time to make ourselves important. We live in a society that has made it very popular to put ourselves last, but also to feel guilty about that. And it's a strange double standard, but at the same time, that's how we've been marketed to. So I love the idea that bullet journaling is kind of a slap in the face to normal everyday societal life expectations because I'm taking time for myself and I'm saying, yes, Sarah, you're important enough to sit down for half an hour or maybe even two hours if you have the time on a weekend to plan out your week, to plan out your month and to make sure that next week your stress levels can stay down because you're worth spending time on. The things that I put on my paper are not necessarily groundbreaking. They're not gonna change the world, but they change my world. And that's a very important thing. take a dive into some of my old journals. I'm going to show you some examples of pages that worked for me at the time. Now they wouldn't work for me as much. Um, also, my priorities have changed a little bit. At the beginning, I was more interested in the mental health side and taking time to create and taking time for myself um, away from all of the other shoulds. Don't should yourself. Um, and now, right... <laughs> I, I still, I'm, I want the creative side, but I have a lot less time to be creating little tiny boxes of things like that. Um, so I, I've mixed a style that used to work for me and a more triage style of bullet journaling for this year. Um, and so I'm gonna show you a couple examples of what I have done in the past and what I do now. So one of the first places I like to start when it's either the beginning of a new journal or the beginning of a month is something called a brain dump. And the idea behind a brain dump 
is kind of just like what it sounds, is that we're taking everything that is rolling around in our brain, begging for attention, and we're putting it on one piece of paper and trying to get it out of our head. Um, all that time that we spend trying to remember specific things and it's just constantly rolling around, this is a way to combat that. So I might have um, like school meetings. Oops. Drop off and pick up. Um, I want something for attendance. Um, behavior stuff. Uh, slash 504, slash IEP, ways to track that kind of stuff going on in class. Um, I have like, I need shopping lists. Um, I want some mental health stuff. Goal tracking. Oops, that's supposed to say goal. Um, if you're making your own list, these are going to be more specific things since you don't need to know everything about my life because it's not really that exciting and it's not relevant to you. I'm just doing kind of generalized observations. Um, you might need something for um, a schedule, um, phone numbers, or budget codes, things that we always forget but always tend to need. Um, we probably shouldn't do a password sheet, but I've seen people do password sheets in theirs. Um, really just, really just thinking about all of the things that you tend to forget, but you need to know. That's what's going to go in my brain dump. Just trying to get it out of my head. Um, so this is a cheat sheet that I printed off from Diary of a Journal Planner. I've already used the sheet, so I'm going to remove it, but we're still going to use it. And I will have a link in our resource page. Um, so thinking about now that we have our brain dump done, all of the things we should be remembering, where, how am I going to start to organize that? Um, so something called an index page can be helpful. This uh, stores all of your info by page number. Um, so if we look in one of these old journals, the index. has um, a key, which we can talk about, but also it has this index. So I know that if I wanted to uh, look specifically for ideas or the meeting on work-based learning, it would be on page 126, and I can quickly flip to that page. Um, the other thing that we can think about is whether or not we want to use a key. I find it helpful, um, and you develop your own as you go, which is the nice thing, but thinking about what are some tasks, um, how are we going to represent a task? So I usually use a little square if it's an event or an appointment. Um, I've transitioned to just using a circle because I don't need to know 9 million different pictographs. Uh, notes are usually just little hash marks or dots. Um, you can have due dates, important things to remember, um, reminders on a specific thing to do. Um, if something fun happens or if you have an idea, you can make a little heart or a light bulb. Um, the big one that I use still is mainly these completed and migrated tasks as well as those tasks that are canceled. So when I've completed something, I simply check it off in my book, whether it's an event or a task or an appointment. Um, if I'm migrating it, so I don't get it done that week, but I need to move it to the next week, I mark a little arrow so that I remember that I need to move it. And if it's been canceled or it um, never happened, I just exit out. Um, that helps me remember if I need to reschedule a meeting, things like that. Um, and then the quotes and questions, I don't really use that much. Um, I've created my own system that works for me a little bit better. Um, so a key can be totally customizable. Another helpful sheet that we are going to look at is the future log. And so this is something that I put in every one of my journals. Um, so many times we have conversations where it's like, hey, in April, don't forget, we have this one conference coming up. I will. I will forget um, unless I put it somewhere. So I can flip to you April and I can write in that I've got the a conference or I've got a meeting that I need to get to. And that way I don't have to try to remember it all the way until April. It's already in my book and it's done. Um, so the future log has been very helpful to me um, in teaching and just in personal life. 
Another thing that can be helpful is goal and habit trackers. So if you are trying to get better at specific things, for me this year I had, this was like 2017, I was really wanting to work on a couple specific fitness goals. These little trackers, they kind of give you that accountability. And if you look up habit trackers on Google, you will find so many different options. There's so many cool ways to track your mood, track your water intake, track all kinds of certain things. Um, so it can be a goal or it can just be trying to observe like how long did you spend on your phone? Um, how much are you sleeping? Things like that. Um, and then the other reason to include a goal sheet is because I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in everybody else's life and trying to get everything done for other people that we forget to set our own goals. And 10 years down the road, we're like, oh my gosh, I didn't do all these things I wanted to do. And so creating small goals can help us build to bigger goals. And so I knew that I wanted to get back into creating. I was getting into a rut where I just, I wasn't making anything. And I wanted to try new recipes. I was gonna post a picture of something that I considered to be beautiful. Taking time with the cats, definitely checked all those boxes. Um, and I wanted to read at least 400 pages that, that month. Um, and I didn't quite get there, but it was helpful to me to see how much I was actually reading. And so the goals that are important in your life it can be fun to track them, and it also has a great accountability. Um, collections are things like, if we go into this month's tracker, I decided that I was going to do a collection of quotes and sayings that make me smile. And so this isn't a page that I'm frequenting every day, but sometimes when I need a little pick-me-up, I can go to my quotes and sayings page and I can just take a look at some of these quotes that give me a little bit of hope or feel goods. Um, people will do collections on the types of gifts they got for Christmas. So you can remember who to send thank you notes to. And it's kind of a cool way to track like when you got that special gift. Um, you can do quotes on or collections on self care ideas. Um, I have ways to say no because I'm a, a chronic yes sayer. Um, and so these collections are mainly just ways to put ideas all in one space and also to lend some relevance to some of the things that we want to highlight in our lives. Uh, then we get into monthly and weekly spreads. This is an old version of a weekly spread I used to have. Um, so I had something for each day, but then I also had a section for the one class that I was teaching. Um, at this point, I was only teaching one class a couple times a day, um, and I was in the library the rest of the time, um, being a assistant librarian but I needed something to track. Um, and then I have a little like reflections area. Right now, now that I'm teaching six classes a day, that's not cutting it. Um, and so I have adapted to a new system. And this is um, a little bit crazy, but at the same time, it's helpful this year. So this year, instead of making all the tiny little boxes, I've just used washi tape. And washi tape is a great tool. It comes in tiny little rolls, um, big rolls, and it's a paper-based tape, so you get a lot of really fun designs on them. So for October, I have little stars and moons. Um, but I've just taken my washi tape and divided my page out. I also moved to a different, bigger book. Um, you can see the size difference. This is an A5, this is a B5, and it definitely has given me a lot more space that I need to just write all my stuff in. This year with A-B scheduling, um, as well as online work, um, I've decided to just use sticky notes. Again, it's um, all about speed this year and making sure I have time to do stuff. And so I've got the first day I see them, the second day I see them, and what we're doing online. Um, and so that way for me, it's all in one place. I know what's happening for the week in all of my classes. And for me this year, that works very well. If you check out on our resource page that I'll talk about at the end of this video, there's a teacher bullet journaling site. And um, there are so many different ways that you can lay out a week for your lesson planning. Um, but the main idea is that it's very helpful to um, keep it all in one place so that way you don't have so many things that in, in the midst of things, things get lost. Um, also, the monthly planner, again, it looks, we'll go to this year. It can look different every single year. Um, or every single month you can change it up. For me, I like to have some kind of an art piece, and then I like to have what's going on in that month. So 
just like with the future log, I can mark in be like, oh, the 27th, I need to remember that I have to do something. Um, or like, oh, I have some birthdays coming up. And so I have an overview of the month and then I can get into the weekly stuff. Um, but the monthly log, again, can look very different depending on who the person is and how you want it to look. A page spread that I found helpful, um, and a spread is just two pages together. Um, and as you put it, like decide what you want to put in there, that's called your layout. Um, so one of the other pages that I, and spreads that I found helpful as a teacher is an engagement tracker. So I've been able to um, write down my classes, who's in them, and then the A-B scheduling, because it's insane this year, um, and mark down who is on task, who is kind of not really doing what they should be, and who's not doing anything of what they should be. And this layout is called a Dutch door. Um, so basically you're cutting away part of the page, but I only have to do one section of the dates, but then I can have these pages flip through. And so it's almost like creating a mini book within a book. Um, but Dutch doors can be very helpful as we have multiple classes, um, different sections of specific things. And again, if you look into that teacher bullet journaling uh, group, there's a lot of cool examples of Dutch doors that can be helpful for you. Something else that I was thinking about when creating this class is what I would have liked as a beginning bullet journaler. And while there were resources available, I had to do a lot more hunting than I would have liked. So what I've put together here is just a web page that has other specific resources on them. So if we take a look here, I have pages from Passion Planner that you can actually print out. You could just tape them into a journal and see if you use those pages while you're figuring out if you wanna buy a bullet journal. Um, or if this is kind of the method you like, you can buy a really cool looking binder, print out your pages and call it good. Uh, the actual bullet journal site, so this is where uh, Rylan talks about kind of his ideas behind it. You can buy the book, you can talk about the blog, you can look at examples. Uh, the Mighty YouTube has tons and tons of tutorials, so I linked a playlist that has a lot of great uh, kind of how-to videos and getting started and what a lot of our lingo means. So it's like this video, but more, um, so like 102. Uh, then there's like a whole section on minimalistic journaling. So if the idea of making all of these fancy spreads kind of freaks you out a little bit, take a look at this because it's going to be, I think, more your speed. So you're still organizing your ideas, you're getting everything out on paper, and you're using that bullet journaling methodology, but you're not having to do um, necessarily as much decorating and the, the fancy stuff, if you will. Um, if you're really wanting to take it to that level, there are pre-made journals. So there's companies that have bullet journalers hired and they've created, it's kind of a, a mixed world between the journals you would normally buy or the planners you'd normally buy at like Barnes and Noble and having to make your own bullet journal. Um, so somebody who already does bullet journaling has made these. And so they're pre-made, pre-printed that you can then decorate, you can do the fun stuff, but without having to do all the layout. Um, and then this is something that I thought was kind of fun, uh, but I made you guys an Amazon shopping cart. So obviously if you want to buy this stuff local, please do support your local businesses, especially during this pandemic time. But this is at least an idea list that things to look for, things that have been helpful to me, but also that I've picked up from other bullet journalers around the globe um, as things that have been helpful for them. Uh, and it's just fun to go shopping for art supplies. <laughs> Uh, Diary of a Journal Planner is the site where we got our cheat sheet for getting started. They have so many resources. Um, definitely take some time and just like power through some of their videos and tutorials. It's a great site. Um, and same thing with this uh, getting started resources page. If you have questions that I have not answered, or you're wondering how to start or how to do a specific thing, check out these two sites because they have, I know they have it on there. Um, and while I only have a little bit of time, they've got hours and hours to give you um, as far as helping you along your journey. Um, if you are somebody who is tied to their, their uh, tablet and you really enjoy the digital world, 
uh, there's a virtual planner through Xenia. Uh, it's really cool. And you can either buy it by the month or by the year. And it's, it's an expensive app, but not like more expensive than it would be to just buy a planner with all the stickers and washi tape. Like you get to use digital washi tape. It's cool. Uh, so if you're into using technology and digital planning and doing digital drawing, uh, this could be a really cool thing for you. And also then it's on your phone or your tablet and you don't have to carry it around with you. Uh, and then the last thing I did was I linked a couple social media accounts on Facebook and Instagram that uh, have been helpful to me. They're good for ideas. They're good for just seeing how people do things differently. There's one um, that's specifically for teachers down here, teachers who bullet journal. Um, so things that are more interesting to us, uh, attendance trackers, behavior trackers, uh, like rules and remembering things, the, the stuff that teachers do, but also how to do like your lesson planning and things like that. It's all within your same book. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, so check out this page. If there's something you'd like me to add, definitely contact me uh, through my bio and I can see if I can add it to the page. Uh, but hopefully this, um, so thank you again for listening to me. And I really, I, I wish you the best this year. I, I know that no matter what you're doing, you're trying hard and that's really all we can ask for and just caring for kids and trying to grow their creative brains. So enjoy the rest of your day and happy journaling.